This is Anne Berlin from Hellion, and you're watching Reality Check TV. Got her back on the show after many years. One of my all-time favorites, Anne Boleyn of Hellion. Good to see you. Good to see you, my dear. <laughs> you, know, you know I fucking love this girl to death, and I love her band to death, and I'm so fucking stoked that, 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 that you're uh, working on some new music. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our new record is coming out. Yeah, I should record. That, that dates me, I guess, yeah, huh? Yeah, EP, right? <laughs> EP, CD? No, it's, it's actually a two-disc anthology and on uh, Cherry Red Hear No Evil in, in the UK, which the UK has always supported us big time. And uh, then we've got an EP that's coming out a couple months later, followed by a re-release of... Uh, some new songs, right? Some stuff. So we were on a, a, a goal of having three releases out per year. And wow. um, it's going to be good. And, and some touring too, right? And some touring, absolutely. <laughs> Last time when you were on Reality Check TV, uh, uh, you, you were in detente exactly. at, at the, at the uh, Tidal Wave Festival. Yep. Oh. Yeah. And you, and you had these dreadlocks or something. I did. I have the braids in. Yeah. Now you've got the classic Anne Boleyn look. This is, well, this, like, is my, this is my real hair. This so is the look know. I like better. This is the look I remember you by. This is good. The, 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 the true iconic uh, uh, bewitching enchantress of heavy metal that you are. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you did, you know, Hellion did do a uh, kind of comeback al al album a, 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 a few years ago. Um, Which one? And, and, and uh, the head shit is going to hit the fan, that song. Oh, I love that. You know, that, that album was originally intended to be a solo record, mm -hmm. but the European record company wanted to make it into, you know, they, they said, Hellion will sell better. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, that's my one of my favorite tracks off the album. Yeah. Now, tell me, the, the, you, you did release an anthology called Queen of Hell, so how's this new two-disc anthology going to be different? Well, it's a, it's a two-disc anthology. It's got 26 songs on it. And the thing that makes it very special is we're taking it from the very first demo tapes, which basically, you know, we, we recorded for a $1,000, and they ended up at <laughs> number six on the album charts in the UK. Mm -hmm. So from that, we went to work with Ronnie James Dio. Yeah, I spoke to Anne uh, about four months ago, I think, and uh, a guy who played in her band, a guy named... Uh, Ray Schenk, who's a guitar player, one of the guitar players, he's the one who had been with him the longest. He's a really close friend of mine. And, uh, Ray's uh, really gotten into recording, uh, digital recording, and he's still a great player. And, uh, we occasionally work together and do some things for a friend of ours. But yeah, I've seen, I see Ann a lot, and I see Ray a lot. And I think that the last I heard, they were, they had some uh, affiliation with uh, Rod Smaller, who's so, uh, Iron, Iron Maiden's manager. Sanctuary, and some promise of uh, an another album from Hellion, so it may happen again. Yes. And we recorded some demo tapes that I, I thought were outstanding always, and didn't do anything. Went to Ken Scott, recorded some amazing demos, didn't do anything. Then on to Screams in the Night and on, on to the history of Hellion. But so we, one of the things that's going to be special about this is that we're releasing some material that a lot of people have probably never heard. Yeah, well, including you know some of the stuff that Ronnie did with us. So, oh it's, God, um, I I, it's my I'm, personal tribute. You know, it's, I'm excited it's, to hear that. Just tell me about that. Gets me so excited. You know, and, and of course, new new material that we've done. Myself, Simon, Scott Warren, 
uh, Bjorn, and, and a great new guitar player named Maxwell Carlisle. We've been working on some new stuff in the same exact vein as Hellion because it, it's that's what it has to be. Yes. And um, we are looking forward so much to playing out and especially to heading over to England. <laughs> Classic Hellion. We're not trying to invent, reinvent the wheel. You know, the music is in my heart. Yeah. And I'm not going to go and, and try to, like, make something that's going to, you know, appeal to the, the yeah. whatever it is. Who, who, who the hell knows, yeah. you know? I remember Nightmares of the Daytime on the Hollywood Girls soundtrack. Oh, yeah, that's, that's really early. That was probably, the, I, I think, was the first song that Hellion ever wrote. No kidding. Absolutely. It's such a good nightmares. fucking song. And one of the best, well, the rest of that record sucked, except for Betsy Bitch, the rest of that record sucked. But that song in particular was the best song on that no, record. No, that was, that was a heavy, heavy song, you know. Hellion originally was a three, or was a four piece, you know, uh, and myself, of course. And that song was, was, was very, very good. A long time ago, you and the original Hellion guys, you lived in a haunted house that was called the Annie Hill House. The Annieville Horror House. Was that named after you? It was. It was named after, after actually the Aunt Amityville Horror House. Right, that's right, that, obviously. So I heard you hear your name being called in the middle of the night or weird stuff was happening. All there. kinds of stuff, you know. I mean, and there were a number of musicians that ended up, you know, back in those days, we were, you know, no one knew who we were or anyth anything like that. But a uh, number of musicians that went on to do, you know, good things, lived at that house, and we'll always tell you about the stories about that house. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so what, what, what happened with detente? Like, what, what, what went up with that? Okay, here's the story with detente. Okay, I was honored, first of all, to be asked to fill in for Dawn Crosby because I think she's one of the few female singers that has got integrity and has got feeling with her, her vocals, mm -hmm. with her music. Her lyrics meant something, and that's something that I can't say about a lot of female singers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dawn was the real deal. Okay, so it, it was an honor to be asked to go and, and play with, with the guys in detente. Mm -hmm. um, what happened was after we did some shows, we were supposed to um, go in and do a recording. Now, I had a number of different people that were coming to me that were talking about, you know, um, you know, interested in producing this thing, etc. We ended up at, at Bill Montoyer's studio. Bill's a good guy. I walked in, and the first thing was, here's the lyrics. Now, anybody that knows anything, and again, thanks to Ronnie, you know, it was like, well, the first thing that I learned as being a lead singer is, is if you're a good singer, you write your own lyrics, you write your own melody line. So here's all of a sudden someone delivering me the lyrics of a song called Kill a Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> now, I myself, 
am pretty much independent when it comes to politics. I think that pot needs to be legalized. I think that gay marriage should be okay. Absolutely. I think that, you know, your personal business should be your personal business. Totally. Right? But I don't want to sing a song called Kill Rush Limbaugh. And that, that became an issue, you know, I didn't want, and there was another song also that was against the U.S. military. And I've had, you know, my stepdad, my biological dad, my grandfather, all kinds of people, my, my, my you know, stepbrothers served in the military and I could not do a song that was like anti-military. I just, I just couldn't bring it within my heart because I don't care whether you're, you know, from the United States from Belgium or Spain or Russia or whatever it is, you have, uh, I, I think most people should have the, the feeling of wanting to protect their home country, you know, so it was just something that I couldn't do. So I ended up getting into kind of a little bit of a situation with the, the bass player and I said, I can't, you know, I can't do this, it's, it's not me. And the next thing I know, um, I'm, you know, basically reading on Blabbermouth that I'm out of the band, and I get this phone call. Oh, and, really? That's and, pretty low. Uh, no, it, it was okay. You know, we we parted amicably. It was just a very different. You know, I understand where they were coming from. They were, you know, very political, and and at that point of time, of course, Don was no longer in the band to well, to guide it and lead it. Yeah. And it was being led by, to my impression, the bass player. And, and he didn't even write any of the music of their classic songs. I mean, well, you know, come on. I don't know. You know. The story that I was told was that Ross Robinson, who later was in Corn and had a very big well, role. He produced Corn. He became a master. Yeah. He became the new metal producer, but he was in the Mighty Detente. Yeah, so he was in Detente, and the stories that I was told was that he was a major contributor to the band, as well as you know Caleb and you know all the guys. The drummer in Detente was excellent too. I've got to you know do a shout out for Steve. Steve's a good guy, so. Um, but that's what happened. Okay. I couldn't myself, you know. I, it's just not in me to to do yeah. those kind of. Well, songs. I'd rather see you with Hellion. Yeah. You belong. You you, you that, that is your baby. That's where you belong. And I've always been a bit bigger Hellion fan. I'm glad I got to see you live. But I still haven't seen Hellion live. You know that? Well, you got to do it. You're still doing new Renaissance records, right? Absolutely. We've had to revive it. It's like the 1980s all over again. You know, here, here back in the 1980s, we had a record deal in Europe, England. They were doing great, you know. Um, and in America, we couldn't get a record deal. Mm -hmm. Hey, guess what? <laughs> 1980s all over again. Hellion's got a big record deal in Europe, in England, out of England, and in America. We're doing our own. Yeah. But you know what? Doing our own has not been that bad because the last time we were doing our own, we helped bands like Morbid Angel and Sepultura and a few other bands that no one really knew about then. So yeah, it's yeah, all you, good. you deserve so much for credit for uh, it's all helping good. them out. And, you know, and I, th I think you're, you're finally starting to get a lot of your uh, just do recognition. Well, thank you. After all these years. Thank you. And, and, and also, ever since that first time I interviewed you, you've shown me a lot of support, and I really appreciate that. Well, I appreciate that. Absolutely. Well, you've got to come out and see Hellion. I've got to come out and see Hellion. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to get drunk and get crazy. And so where, <laughs> where, where can people get, get more information about Anne Boleyn and Hellion? Well, Facebook's always a great thing, you know, and, um, you know, the, the official website, www.hellion.us, mm -hmm. and uh, it's all good. Well, Anne, it's so great to see you. I'm just so stoked that Hellion's got some new music out. I can't wait to hear that anthology and the new EP coming out. Good to see you. Yeah, I love you, girl. All right. <laughs> All right.